So we'll start with Ezekiel 47, the first verse. We would do responsive reading. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, water issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man who had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that lives, which moves, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river go comes. Excuse me. And it shall come to pass that the fish shall stand upon it from Engedi, even unto Engalim, they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the mire places thereof, and the marshes thereof, shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And together? And, and by, by the, the river upon, upon the bank, bank thereof, thereof on this side and on that side shall grow all trees for meat whose leaf shall not fade neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed it shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine I want you to turn back to verse 6 with me and when you read that, I want you to put your name there. Amen? And so let's do that. And he said unto me, Rosetta, have you seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now there's something that I didn't hear. Verse 6, I want you to put your name in it. <laughs> Not just me, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's do that again, okay? Mm -hmm. And he said unto, unto me, Rosetta, have you seen, seen this? this? Then he, he brought me and caused me to return, return to, the to the brink of the, of the river. river. Amen? Amen? You may be seated. <laughs> Amen. I want to talk to you today. The Lord gave me this um, message for you and me as the first partaker. And what he says is, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Here we have Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was a major prophet in the Old Testament. His name means to be strengthened by God, amen? He was called to the, to the office of prophet and minister. He was a contemporary of Jeremiah who was 20 years older than he but he was also uh, a contemporary of Daniel and they were the same age. I'm just giving you a little backdrop on who Ezekiel was. Not that you might not know, but that's just my assignment, okay? So Ezekiel used a lot of visions, prophecies, parables, symbols, 
uh, and, and to communicate his message to his people. There are, so there are many picturesque scenes that illustrate spiritual principles, promises, and covenants. Now, they were in Babylon. Ezekiel wrote this while they were in captivity in Babylon because of disobedience. But he was 30 when he was called to the ministry. He had given a prophecy. He warned them that Jerusalem would be destroyed and they would be exiled. And their exile would be prolonged with no hope of immediate return. So this is a place where people are looking for something to happen, believing God that it's going to happen immediately, but it's been put on pause. Amen? Amen. So, but during that time, there were some false prophets. But the false prophets came and deceived those that were in exile. They told them, oh, you're going back right away. You, you, it's not going to be a long time. So the people are hot between two opinions here. Amen? So in 586 B.C., there was an escapee who came from Jerusalem and he was able to tell Ezekiel the bad news that Jerusalem had fallen six months earlier. So the Babylonians had wasted the city. They destroyed the temple. And so that place that you call home is no longer there. So then people were given to grieving. They were mourning. They were sad, despondent, looking for some kind of hope. Lord, have you left us? We're here in captivity. Amen? But the prophecy was given to Israel. And Ezekiel is speaking of that time when he writes this book. He is considered one of the major prophets. Now, this prophecy was written prophetically for when God returns, when Jesus returns to the earth, and he establishes his kingdom reigning 1,000 years, when there would be peace on the earth. But we're going to use this scripture for a practical application for us today. Is that all right with you? Amen. Now, Zechariah 14.4 prophesied that when Jesus returns, he's going to set his foot on the Mount of Olives and it will be split in half. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, we want to be ready. So he asked me first, Rose, do you see what I see? And so the question to you today is do you see what I see? As he took the man of God through this journey through the waters. And we're going to unfold that now, okay? Zechariah in 14, 8, he prophesied of the living waters of God. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at this uh, as what the prophet is doing during this time, as the prophet does in these times. The prophet came to encourage and to remind Israel of his future restoration to their homeland. We got to always encourage. We have to say what God tells us to say concerning his promises, which are yes and amen in him. Amen? 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, But he who prophesies speaks unto men to edify, exhort, and comfort. Say that with me. Edify, exhort, and comfort is what the prophet comes to do. Amen? God's grace was pledged to us in the Abrahamic covenant. God promised to preserve a remnant of us, Israelites, through whom he would fulfill restoration and promises, and he said, I'm going to keep my sacred word. Amen? Amen. Now, when we go back and we look at the glory of the river. Thank you. Thank you. Ezekiel is given a glimpse of the river, which is a type or picture of the Holy Spirit. The waters are seen coming from under the threshold of the temple of God, the holy place within the temple. That's where God dwells, even in a desolate, desperate, 
oppressed situation, God shows up to let them know I've made a promise and I'm a promise keeper. Amen? So water begins at the throne and it flows through the altar. The altar is a place of sacrifice, the place of death to self. The waters came down from the cross through the provision of Jesus Christ for he made himself as a ransom for all humanity. Now the measurement that he used was cubits, right? He took him from this place to that place. So a cubit, raise your elbow up like this, and you're measuring from your elbow to the tip of your fingers. That's a cubit. So he took him 1,000 of those from one place to the next, amen? Because he's going to start him at a little place, and we're going to talk about what that place in the ankles means. Do you see what I see? <laughs> so when the water progressed, it flowed and it started out as a trickle, just a little stream of water. It's the stream of the blood that flowed from the precious side of Jesus, but it became a rushing river of life. John 7, 38 tells us that if we thirst, any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow living waters. Amen? Then the water progressed through the north gate. The waters could not be contained. Then they made their way through the east gate. The gospel truth is moving of the spirit, but God wants to use us in order for that to happen. But it can never be stopped, nor can it be hindered. But God told us in Matthew 24, 14, that this gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. As the river grew, Ezekiel gazed upon this river, which started as a stream from under the threshold of the temple, the place of God, the sacred place, it became a raging river as it flowed. What does this have to do with me? The water came up to his ankles. He said, son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought him and caused him to see that this was a shallow place, a place of little depth. It was at his ankles, a superficial place, a surface level. It's a picture of our first encounter with salvation. Some people are content there. They say, well, I, I saved. I, I, I gave my life to Jesus. I'm going to church sometime. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So I'm good. You know, you ask me, you good? I'm good. That that's where they're content. But their water just a little bit of Jesus, a little presence of God. But he said, that's not where I want you to be. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, according to Matthew 5, 6. Are you hungry today? Are you thirsting for more of Jesus today? If so, then he said, come on. I'm going to take you to another place. The water comes up to the knees. It refers to the prayer life of the believer. You're going into deeper waters now. You're not just content. You're not just at the status quo. You're not just going through to look like you've been with Jesus. A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Do you see what I see? said the Lord. It's a vital and necessary part of our journey to want to de and desire to grow closer to God. There's a hunger and a thirst that once you've been in his presence, you'll never be the same way again. You want more of him. I want more and more and more of you. There's songs that have been sung say, I need more of you, Jesus. You just want to experience the fullness of his presence. 
You want to hear him speak to you. You want to be able to open up his word and to hear him minister to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, through his word. We need to move from the ankle experience. Moving on to the knees. And then he moved them on to the loins. The loins represents reproduction, strength, and power. As we grow in the knowledge of God, then we begin to learn how to pray strategically. We learn how to reproduce spiritually. We have a hunger and desire to see the lost come to Christ. He said, come unto me, all who are weary and heavily laden. That should be our cry for the people that we see out in the marketplace. There should be a passion in our hearts to share Jesus Christ. There should be the great commission to go and make disciples, to teach them the things that Jesus has taught us through the power of the Holy Spirit and to know that he's with us always, even until the end of the days. He said to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There should be that compassion when you get to the lowing level of your relationship with God and the power of the Holy Spirit is moving through you, then you will see lies that are being controlled by the power and direction of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will see them at a place where many might not ever reach because they're content with the ankle experience. When you get to the lowing, you see in the lowing level of the water, you see half of that person. You don't see more of them, they're starting to diminish, they're starting to decrease, they're starting to become enveloped by the spirit of God. Less of me and more of God. We're the city that's sitting on the hill, that house that, that, that cannot be hidden. We're that candle that not can be hidden under a basket. We're the light that God is using for the darkness that's in the world. When people see us, they should see Jesus. They should hear the spirit of the Lord speaking. We should be able to minister to the people who don't know God. Do you see what I see? This is the point when the river began to have control over Ezekiel. It was becoming higher. He found himself not able to be in control. You know how we want to control what God does, when he does it, and how he does it. But he was at this place where he started to feel the water was starting to take control of him. He was submitting. The water became so high, was couldn't swim in it. This is where the place where Ezekiel experiences water is over his head. It's a place where he cannot stand or he cannot walk through it. A place where you learn how to pray. You learn how to intercede. You learn how to go into spiritual warfare. You learn how to press your way toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You become less of you. You start witnessing and sharing. It goes back to what you felt when you first received Christ. There was an exuberance. There was a joy. You know, there was a desire to tell others about your experience. But you can't stay there at the ankle experience. You have to go deeper to a place where God can use you, no matter the price. Amen. The Lord will take you as far down the river as you desire to go. When you get to that place, that's a place of surrender. That's a place where you must completely submit to the power and the direction of the Lord. It's a place where it's not about anything other than Lord what is your desire for me I submit my will to yours oh God I know that I must go through some tribulations I must go through some trials but the spirit of the Lord said that in this, in this life you will have tribulations but to be of good cheer for God said I have overcome them all amen that's that place when you can just be so content in knowing that God is with you. There's a time in my life when I have just experienced this place. I'll, re I'll share with you a recent experience. Most of you know I'm in school and I've shared this with some of my 
uh, members of the church and I was writing a very critical manuscript at a deadline to get it out. And I finished it, y'all. And I'm sitting there tweaking it, you know, making little corrections. I said, I was feeling so excited because I had finished it, it like 25, 30 pages. And as I'm sitting there, all of a sudden, an object fell off the bookcase onto my power source of my surge protector and my computer went black. And all I could do was sit there. When I say to you that the peace of God that passed all understanding came on me, I could have lost my mind. I just sat there and I said, wow. <laughs> Woo. I could say, whoo, God, what in the world? He hit the power source in the natural. He hit that power that sustains, enables us, the paraclete, the Holy Ghost that keeps us, that walks with us. Amen? The power of God that's a threat to the kingdom of darkness. He did it in the natural, but he was trying to do it in the spiritual. But the greater one, Yerabashe, lives inside of me, inside of you. And I said, the devil, <laughs> the Lord rebukes you. <laughs> this too shall pass. God knew that he had lifted that edge. He wanted to say, let me see what you're going to do. See, we're tested in that area. Are you going to praise me when it's going good? I allowed this to happen because I want to see what you're going to do. Are you going to trust me with all your heart? Or are you going to lean to your own understanding, Rose? Hallelujah, Jesus. And unbeknownst to me, I'd forgotten I had started another paper, the same one. But I changed it. God changed it. In retrospect, I know he did this because he was testing me on this day. I want to see what you're going to do. I blocked it all out. You're left with nothing. At that moment, that's what I thought. But he's going to say, where's your faith? Are you trusting in me? See, Psalm 20 says, some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we remember the name of the Lord our God. I know where he brought me from. I know that if it was not for the power of the Holy Ghost, I would not be standing here today. I know that if it was not for the Lord had his hands on me, I would not be standing here today. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, he touched me. I know she. The song say he touched me. Hallelujah. He touched me. He changed me. He turned my life around. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, on your side. Where would we be? I would begin to tell you the story of my life, but I don't think I have enough time. But I never thought that I would be standing here today. I started out with an angle experience, let me be honest with you. I just said, okay, I'm going to start going to church. I was raised in church. But just fall away. You want to start doing some things that looks appealing. It's, it, it makes you feel good, but it's not good. But at that time, you don't know that. You've gotten so consumed with that temporary pleasure. Amen? But God said, I got a plan for your life. I'm going to let you go, but I'm going to put a chokehold on you. You can't go but so far. Because I know what I need you to do. And I know the season that you're going to do it. Yes. Amen. He knows the plans. Yes. So what happened was, he brought me to this place where I had no alternative than to come back home to Jesus. I no longer could be content just going to church. Just going through the motions. I cried out, God, all of you. I want all of you. I need all of you. 
I'm no longer content here at the ankles. God, take me to the knees, oh God. Fill me up, God. I want the overflow, God. Use me to your glory, God. And then God said, and then I want to overtake you, encompass you. The water is overflowing you. Do you have no control? I'm not a swimmer. But when a person is taught to swim, there's a place when you get into the deep waters that the instructor tell you, just relax. Just relax. Any swimmers in the house? Any swimmers? Did anybody swim for real, for real? Okay. Well, I was told this. Somebody swims. So when you get to the, he to the heavy water, the, the high waters, are you told to relax? Just not fight the water. Not push back against it. Because when you do that, there's a spirit that's taken over and it's called fear. And if there's fear taking place, then what is missing? Faith. You're trusting not in the instructor, but you've reached a point where this water is controlled by the creator of the water. And he commands it to go whichever way he wants it to go and to do what he wants it to do. He speaks to even the storms in the water and says, peace, be still. He's that same God. Amen. When you get to that place, it's a place of surrender. A place where you no longer want to just be a body in the body. Because God has given each of us gifts to be used for kingdom purposes. So if you're in the house today, there is a gift. There's a calling. There's a need that pulls you from an ankle experience. God wants to take you deeper and deeper and deeper in him. Sometimes people say, well, nobody sees me. But God said, do you see what I see? I see you every Sunday. I see you every day. I hear your conversations. I know that you don't spend the time with me that I desire. I don't hear you praying to me. God said, I need you to go deeper. Come unto me. I want to sup with you. I want to show you great and mighty things that you know not of. I know what you're doing. Mm, God, I say. People, the, I hear this. I, he don't want me. Not with what I do. I, I know he can't use me. Trust me when I tell you. He can and he will. When you say yes, God. Yes, yes God. All he wants is a yes. That's all he wants. And he looks at our heart to see the sincerity of our heart. He already knew what you were doing when he called you. He knew what each of the disciples were doing when he called them, but he had need of them in the kingdom. Amen? Yes. There is nothing too hard for God. He went to the woman at the well who had five husbands and the one she was with was on hers. But he went to Samaria. He said, I must needs go to this place. God sent him for her. There was a woman caught in the very act of adultery. But Jesus said, where are your accusers? I know what you did was wrong, but go and sin no more. He's the same God. He went to heal the demoniac. Everybody else was running from him. Feathers couldn't hold him. He was cutting up full of demons. But Jesus went on the other side to the gatherings for him. And he was set free. And he sat at the feet of Jesus, wanting to go and follow him. He said, I need you to stay right here. Because all them naysayers that say you were crazy, that God wouldn't have any use for you, that we had to bind you up in the graveyard, you had to cut yourself. And then, but Jesus said, but I came for you. And as he came for him, He's came for each and every one of us. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I recall a young lady, Jairus, his daughter. She was laying in the bed at the point of death. She was dying. But the people was in there mourning her. Ha. Oh, she gone. 
I don't know where Jesus is coming from. Ain't nothing he can do with her. I know proper English. I'm just, I don't know why we're that way. But, yeah. What are you coming for? Jesus came. He was delayed from going to Jairus' house because there was a woman with an issue. <laughs> but she pressed her way to touch the hem of his garment to be made whole. He had need of her in the kingdom. She was an example to society that told her that she had to stay away. But she said, I'm going to get my healing. I'm going to get my, I'm going to press my way. And she was made whole. He's the same God. And on his way to Jairus' house, the people, do you remember good times, Wanda used to go to everybody's funeral. I always envisioned this when I read this story that these people were at her funeral and she had not even been buried. <laughs> but Jesus came in the room and he put all the naysayers out the room. Y'all go ahead. Because it takes faith to move God. God said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. Amen. He said, y'all come in here, parents. We're going to pray. He spoke a word. Talitha Kuma. Damsel arise. Get up from out of that dead place. I no shame. She rose up. And she started eating. Feeding on the word of God. Being replenished. Restored. Being made whole. He's the same God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a place where we have to get but we surrender all to God. I don't care how desperate it looks, how desolate, how oppressed the situation is, how depressed the enemy wants to make you think your situation is. Even what they have always told you. God said, let God be God and let every man be a liar. Don't put your trust in man because man will deceive you. He's a deceiver. He's being used by the enemy to speak that word to you that is contrary to what God said about you. Speak what God says about you. God said you're the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. You are the lender. The woman of God blessed us last week. Change your mindset. We're kingdom people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, it's nothing wrong with having riches. But God wants us to not make riches our God. Amen. He always wants to bless his people. He said, I'm going to bless you going out and bless you coming in. Bless you in the city. Bless you in the field. Your households are blessed. Wealth and riches are in your house. So, amen. Speak it and decree it, said the Lord. Job said, I shall decree a thing uh, and it shall be established. Say what God said, for the power is in your tongue. Death and life are in your tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit of it. What y'all eating today? God said, do you see what I see? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Let's give him a praise break right now. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. Thank you, God. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. He wants the best for his people. Thank you, Jesus. Going through the waters, Ezekiel came to that place of dependence, a place in the river where things were out of his control. He reached a place that is beyond his ability to change. Hallelujah. All consuming fire. He depended on the waters to carry him through. Not leaning to his own understanding. Psalm 42, 7 said the, palm, the psalmist cries out, deep calleth unto deep. Lord, I'm in deep waters. I'm covered by wave after wave of anxiety. But God said, I will make a way in the desert for you. I'll make a way, a way in the wilderness. Hallelujah, when the waters and the rivers come, they will not consume you. The fires won't burn you. I'm your protector. I'm your keeper. I'm your God. I'm your strong tower. When you run into me, you are safe. Hallelujah. And we thank God that he is our protector. He is our secret place. Psalm 91 says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high God 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Hallelujah, do you trust in him today? Hallelujah, you are going deeper and deeper into the presence of God. No longer just getting our ankles wet. Just putting our toe in the water. You know how when you go to the beach, you put your toe in the water. The water is fine. Come on in. Come on in. The water is fine. The man at the pool of Bethesda laid there for 38 years. Come on, y'all. The water was staring. But he made excuse after excuse for 38 years. I don't want to be in the company with him. Do y'all want to be in the company with him? No, because we want more of God. Your presence here today says, God, I want more of you. Amen. When we move further to a place of sanctification, a place that we're completely saturated by the presence of the water, the Holy Spirit, my whole being is covered, permeated, and saturated by the Holy Spirit. The one who has been filled by the Spirit of God is going to be representative of God. You're going to be his ambassador to go forth out the land to tell people Jesus is Lord. Do you know Jesus? Be led by the Spirit. There are people who are waiting to hear from you. You might say, I don't have a whole lot to say, but let the Holy Ghost have his way. And you have more to say than you even imagine. In verses 6 to 12, it talks about the benefit of this river. It shows the Holy Spirit flowing through us and in the world around us, which we, I've been talking about how God is moving through by his Spirit. He's moving by his spirit now. And Father, touch the hearts of the people. Turn their minds away from the failures of the past. Ah, oh, God, of the lies of the past. The low esteem, the self-worthlessness of the past. Even the mistakes, God. Let them know that when you were held, hung up on the cross, on Calvary's cross, on old Golgotha Mountain, you hung there for every mistake, every lie, every deceit, every betrayal, every pain of the past, every violation of the most personal and intimate parts of our body. God, you hung there for us. You were nailed to the cross for each of those. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, Lord. Somebody needs to hear this. And by his stripes, we are healed. He healed me. He healed me from anger, from bitterness, from low self-esteem, from feeling that you weren't worthy, God. That you didn't measure up. That you always was left behind. Sometimes it's the plan of God to keep you separated from some things. He allows it because it's a part of your testimony. Come on, Joseph. You've been put in a pit. You've been left for dead. But God said, I got a plan for you. I'm going to take you from that pit to the palace. I'm going to take you from a low place and I'm going to make your feet as high feet. I'm going to take you into the high places in me. Hallelujah, said the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. He's proven himself too many times. The songwriter said, you can't tell me about him. <laughs> I, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. <laughs> Is that your testimony today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we get to that place of sanctification, God said, I just want to make sure that you know today that I want to fill you where you've gotten empty. Maybe you've gotten despondent. Maybe you're like the people in Babylon who are waiting to hear a word of hope. Maybe it was a prophecy that was spoken that has not come to fruition yet. And you're saying, I, I, don't, I don't see that happening. 
I don't believe it. But God said, that's where I need you to move from your ankle to the overflowing of the river. Thanks, sis. Where I can take control of your life. But I need you to move by faith. Let the spirit of God lead you and guide you. Don't look at the carnal things. Look by the spirit. Speak by the spirit. Believe through the power of the Holy Spirit. Not my will, God. He has us in a place we're in a refiner's fire. There's a prophet who's been spoken by a true man and one of a God and it could, has not come to fruition because he who begins the work is performing it in you. You're still on the potter's wheel. We all are. It's not a season yet. But trust in the Lord. Wait on the Lord, I say. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait on him. He'll never fail you. Amen. Amen. When the river flowed, it went to even a dead place called the Dead Sea. Now, the Dead Sea has no life in it. It's salty. Nothing can, no fish, no vegetation, nothing can survive there. It's salty. And from what I'm told, it just circulates. It's nothing there. But when the river of God went into the dead place, that murk and miry clay, that place where he brought us out of, that place of darkness into the marvelous light, he said, I'm going to speak life and that more abundant life. I came that you might have life and that more abundant life. Amen? Do you believe that? Do you receive that? Hallelujah. He said, when that river flows, that the trees shall grow for meat. And it shall, the leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof. Psalm 1 said that he shall be like life, a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth fruit in its season. Your season has not come to bring forth fruit. And he said, and this leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There are many now that's in the sea of life that need healing the Holy Spirit has the power to heal all that ails and affects humanity no matter what it is if it's physical, if it's emotional if it's psychological if it's financial if it's healing in your family if it's healing in your job whatever it is and finances your community, we need healing in the land oh God, but he said if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. He said, you will hear from heaven. I will heal your land. Hallelujah. I'll save you, said the Lord. We need healing in the land today. We need healing in our bodies, in our minds. We need healing in the bodies of Christ today. Where we become separated. There's so many that are still not back in the assembly. They're still comfortable at home listening to the word. But God say, forsake not yourself from assembling. Amen? It's time to come back. The world needs to see the church represented with the presence and the power and the anointing that God gave us to effect change in the atmosphere. We're, effect, we're change agents. We shift the atmosphere. God said, wherever you tread the sole of your feet, you have dominion through the power of the Holy Ghost. You can speak a word and there's a shift, there's a change. He gave us power to lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. To speak to the demonic forces and command them to leave in the name of Jesus and they must obey. He is the same God, hallelujah, that spoke to the sea and told the Red Sea, open up. My people need a highway to come through. He's the same God, yesterday, today and forevermore. He is Jesus, he is Lord, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. He's the healer of the brokenhearted, broken lives. Whatever is broken in your life, he came to set the captives free. He is the balm of Gilead. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God who is. He is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He is the great I am. He is Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hold it above shame. Bless your holy name, Jesus. We magnify you and exalt you today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus was crucified for us. He was buried, but on the third day he rose. And when he was resurrected, right before he ascended into heaven, Jesus said to his disciples that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. The word of God in the Holy means let me slow down. Thank you, Jesus. The word upon in Greek translation means overflowing. Even as it was with Ezekiel when he got to the river that was overflowing him. Amen. The power of God, eh? the presence of God, uh, operating in the presence of Jesus Christ Almighty. He said he invited the uh, disciples to tarry. Wait on it. Wait on the Holy Ghost. Don't go out and try to minister without the Holy Ghost. You'd be like the seven sons of Sceva. They got the brakes beat off of them. They tried to replicate you know, the enemy is a counterfeit. He's always trying to imitate. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. But we worship and praise the lion of Judah today, the only true and living king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the king of kings. He ain't like a lion. He is the lion of Judah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. He told them to wait. Wait until you get filled with the Holy Ghost so that you can go out starting in Jerusalem. Then I want you to go to Samaria. And then I want you to go to the uttermost parts of the world. Wait until you get filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, don't go out there on your own. You need strength. You need power. You need the presence of me because all power is in my hands. Hallelujah. The water is a water of restoration. The water restores life to all that inhabits the water. Many need the life living flow of the Holy Ghost. Restoration is needed in our churches. Restoration is needed in our land, in our political environment, in all the areas of our lives. We need to have restoration. But the enemy comes not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But God said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm restoring you even now, says the Lord. Jeremiah 37 16 says, For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of your wounds, said the Lord, because they called us an outcast, saying, Who? This is Zion. No man seeketh after. See, God likes to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. People look at us and say, Y'all still going to church? What y'all going for? They don't know the God that we know. They have not experienced the presence of the God that we have experienced. They don't know that he is the everlasting father, that he is the prince of peace, that he is the great I am, that he is the keeper of our soul, that he loved us so much. God said, I love you with an everlasting love. God showed his love for us when he sent his son to die on a cross for us. When I was in my sin, he had me on, my, on his mind. Hallelujah, that's something to think about. <laughs> Romans 5, 8, he commended his love toward us. That when I was yet a sinner, Jesus had me on his mind. That thought right there would make me want to run around this church with you, Michael. It when you capture the essence of that, the things that you used to do, that if you had been called home at that moment, that you would have gone to a place that he didn't prepare for you. God said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also, that's where I want to be. 
And God knew that. But my actions didn't line up with what I was thinking. So at an appointed time, God said, it's time to come on in. Hell was not created for us. Who would want to go with this weeping and gnashing of teeth? When you have a choice, choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose this day who you're going to submit to. Choose this day that you want to come out of the ankle experience and you want to go up higher to the consuming waters. The Holy Spirit taking complete control over your life. Choose this day. God, I want more of you. Do you see what I see, says the Lord? I see you crying out to me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me, said the Lord. Mm. God said, I see you after the benediction. I see you after the benediction. When the doors are closed. I see you leave and you represent something other than me. It's time to press in. It's time to open up to receive all that God purposed for us. This is the time and it now is. For such a time as this, we got to get it together. Because Jesus is coming soon. There's a season of conversion. He talks about the conversion when he said the moving of the Holy Spirit will lead to loss to Christ. We need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit when we do minister and witness to them. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel to some creatures. Did he say some? What did he say? He said to every creature. Every creature. Mark 16, 15. And you say, but I'm not a preacher. But when you have the word of God in you, you can speak that word to those that you are led by the spirit of God to minister to. There's a lost generation out there, y'all. Our youth are shooting each other up every week, every day. They're despondent. There's a spirit of murder that has come into this land. Sometimes I hear them just shooting. They have guns and no self-control, a dangerous combination. But God has given us the power to pray against that, to take authority over it. Every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. But it starts with us. We got to pray. We got to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. In the name of Jesus, the greater one is in us. We have to be consistent and strategic with praying for those who are lost. This is our future generation. There's been the release of a law where children can smoke whatever they want to smoke when they want to smoke it. And I'm not going to give no glory to that. But everybody here knows what I'm talking about. And I've seen how the smell just permeates the atmosphere. You open up a car, you can be in the supermarket, in the, in the parking lot, and people are opening their doors and you can just smell it. It's taking them over. They don't realize because it's legal does not mean it's lawful. They have, they have, they approved it for usage. But you got to look at what it's doing to your body. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And these children are smoking this and whatever else. Their memories are being affected. Their ability to be productive in society is being impacted. They're not able to even recognize that it is going to destroy that generation economically emotionally, physically, spiritually. It's a plan of the enemy. But 
we have to approach them as the spirit of God leads us with love, not condemnation. Let the spirit of God convict them. But God said, by this, they shall know that you are my disciples when you walk in love. Just walk in love. A lot of times they have not received the love of a parent. They can't recognize what love is. So they turn to anger, to hatred. They want to destroy because the enemy is using them to do that. But don't you know that God created them for purpose? And the main ones that's carrying the guns are the one that God wants to use to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel those that they left behind to come in that God's house may be filled. We got work to do. We got to come together. We got to pray. We got to be on one accord. We got to let the Holy Spirit move to overtake us. Amen. The Great Commission is in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. I promise. Do what I tell you to do. I'm with you. I'm not pushing you out there on your own. I want you to go out and tell them about Jesus. Run, tell that. Tell them on Facebook. Tell them on Twitter. Tell them on Instagram. Tell them wherever you have the opportunity that Jesus loves you and he gave his life for you. Amen? We've been called the salt of the earth. We have to make sure that we're preserving that that God has created for his glory. Amen? In abundance is the last point that I'm going to make. The river will ensure fruit and an abundance for those who dwell around it. The tree will not fade. The leaves will not wither. And the fruit will be abundant. When you abide in me and my word in you. He said, ask me what you will and it shall be given unto you. Ask God. Seek him and knock. He's standing at the door. He's waiting on us. God says that when we allow the spirit of God to move in and through us, then he will fill us with the spirit, right? And when we speak the word of God, then we release the fruit of God. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, temperance, self-control. The fruit that's the fruit that we should be exhibiting in the land. He will know, they will know who you are. We're in the world, but we're not of the world, y'all. They should be able to look at us and see something different. They should be able to hear something different. We shouldn't be cutting up in Walmart, y'all. I'm just saying. Target either. We should be exemplifying the image of God. We were created in his image and his likeness. Amen? Kids, when you go to school, they should see something different. They should hear something different. And when you go in, you represent Jesus. You pray before you go in there. You can pray while you're in there. Bind up that spirit that want to come in and shoot up these schools. Bind up that spirit that's calling in these bomb threats. You come against it. You are saved. You have Christ Jesus, the power of him in you. Speak a thing 
and it shall be established. Amen? Do you agree with that? Amen. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. The thief is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He's invoking fear in the land. Every week now, it's a new spirit that's rising up, calling in bomb threats. We bind up that right now in the name of Jesus. We cancel the assignment of the enemy to invoke fear in our children. Father, we call forth the angels to encamp around every school and camp around them and protect them and keep them from every hurt, harm, or danger, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And let those, oh God, who are committing this crime be brought to justice in the name of Jesus. But in the process, let them come to know you as Lord. But we pray for the souls of those who are lost as well. That's our commission. That's our challenge as people of God. Amen? Are you today, are you experiencing the abundance of God, the presence of his spirit that you so desire? Are you in the place and your relationship with God that you have submitted all unto him? Or are you thirsty? Are you hungry for more of him today? Perhaps you started out, you were on fire. You had a zeal for God. You spent time with him in the word. Praying, fasting, laying before him, just basking in his presence. But then the issues of life came. Those things that he warned us about. He said, in this life, you're going to have tribulations. But he said, be of good cheer. For I've already overcome the world. I've overcome everything that you're going to encounter. When I hung up on the cross, I shed my blood. That you might have life. You have protection. You have peace. You have the love of me. And that thing that hit. It caused you to go into a low place. Maybe you were feeling like the Babylonians had those people in, 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 in captivity feeling. The Israelites. They were feeling hopeless. The word that they was hearing, they weren't seeing it. But faith comes not by hearing, by, by seeing, but by hearing. We don't see it. But we have to know that God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. We walk by faith. Not by sight. This thing came and it caused you to feel despondent. You lost your joy. It's a going through a motion thing now. God, I'm going, but I just, I don't feel that love. I don't feel that closeness to you anymore. I feel empty. But God said, I see that. And he gave me this word today for us. I'm no exception. I have my challenges too. And I have to cry out to God. Lord, fear me again. I pour out. You all pour out. But we get to a place where we say, God, I need to be filled again. I need to feel your presence, God. Paul said he'd been cast down but not destroyed. He'd been pressed on every hand. <laughs> you ever feel like that? The enemy just comes. But God said, I'm a way maker. And so today, if you're feeling that, let's come around the altar. Let's pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord.